Okay, uh, the question that I've got here is, are me emails and social media considered good documentation between a consumer and a business? Uh, the short answer is, is they're better than nothing. Uh, but anytime that you have an interaction, anytime you have a relationship, whether it's with a consumer, uh, with a vendor, with a manufacturing supplier, um, anything, any employees, any kind of interaction, you really need to have a contract. And the reason is um, that contracts define the relationship. So even if it's something as simple as uh, terms and conditions on the back of a purchase order, um, there needs to be something definitive that shows um, how one relationship interacts with the other. And uh, it actually, if you think about it, it's a, it's a very human condition. Um, many of us have relationships, and in those relationships, one person, we have a conversation, one person walks away, and the other person walks away, and both think, have heard something different. So um, the problem with social media and emails is that people tend to interact in social media and emails just like they do in a verbal conversation. And that communication is not necessarily detailed. Um, if any of you have read, uh, read a, a legal document prepared by a lawyer, you'll notice we tend to be pretty specific. And the reason is because we want to tie down the exact relationship to the best of our ability. So while social media and emails do work, and I've seen them really turn the tide in a lot of issues and, and really help people resolve disputes, um, I really wouldn't recommend relying on those. Anytime that you have an issue with a consumer, or anytime you deal with a consumer, you want to go back and you want to be able to say, see, these are the terms of our agreement. Um, these are why we interacted the way that we did. And this is the promises that I made, and this is the promises that you made. And the, the point is, is to make sure that everybody understands the nature of the relationship going in. And uh, while emails and social media may be helpful, uh, they typically don't go into that level of detail. So really, you always want to have some sort of definitive document that outlines um, what the true obligation of each party is. The other issue there is that an email could expand on an obligation, and it could do so inadvertently. Uh, there's been many times in my practice where someone has written an email and they've written it uh, conversationally and what happens is it can be inferred to mean something greater than what, uh, what maybe they had and what, what maybe uh, that business intended on doing. So, uh, so I'm always careful to uh, explain to my clients that emails are used or to be used for confirming uh, discussions. Uh, not to have discussions because those tend to, uh, tend to be written loosely and they tend to be, what, like I said, conversational in nature and it can just leave tons of exposure um, in a courtroom setting which nobody wants to get into um, or just legal expense down the road. So uh, they can be helpful but I, uh, I recommend having a lawyer focus on what kind of relationship the business and the consumer are entering into and then, and then seeing what kind, of, uh, what kind of document needs to be put in place. Uh, obviously, the more succinct and uh, direct, the better, um, but, but that does need to be focused on.